Thanks a lot, Connor. Well, for more on Exxon's fourth quarter earnings and how the company will fare under the Obama administration's alternative energy agenda, I'm joined by Joe Clark, CIO of the financial planning company Financial Enhancement, Ramesh Menon, founder of Structured Investment Management, and Don Longo, editor-in-chief of Convenience Store News. Big Joe, I want to start with you. What's your reaction to these earnings? Well, this is great news for anybody that's got a 401k or a mutual fund. Keep in mind, Exxon makes up about 5% of the S&P 500. That is bigger than J.P. Morgan, Citi, Bank America, and 21 other financial companies put together. So when you, when you look at those numbers, that should be a great start for people's S, the, the S&P 500 and people who've got that in their 401k. Joe, explain this to us. Uh, this is a big part of the S&P 500, and it, these numbers were fantastic. Just, but recently, you had two big downgrades, Goldman Sachs and UBS. Why are these firms, after oil has come down so much, downgrading ExxonMobil here? Part of its history. When you look at, the, at Exxon over the last year, there is usually a, a correlation between the price of oil and Exxon stock. And the bottom line is Exxon's holding up better than the oil. Uh, in fact, over its peers, Exxon was down about 13% last year. Uh, while, the, it, while the peers were off about 39%. And I think the downgrade is just a valuation thing. We're also, in those numbers that you're looking at, worried about the reserves. What is the value uh, that they're going to re, reprice in the, in the ground? Joe, do you think also there's some anxiety about how the new administration is going to handle them? You've got two things, this major alternative energy push and also talk of windfall profit taxes. You think there's some hesitation because of those two things to buy this stock now? Yeah, that's, that is the political risk. We've been watching institutions lighten up on their Exxon holdings. It's one of the largest holdings in mutual funds, obviously, especially in the large cap. And, and the big reason why they're, they're moving out, if you will, or slowing down is that risk. And this is one of those places where the government really needs to keep in mind, we've got to let smart business people run businesses. Last year at the height of oil at 147 bucks a barrel, everybody's screaming about windfall tax. They're screaming that oil's not spending money to try to find, or Exxon's not trying to find new oil reserves. And Exxon's looking at the situation and becomes the largest buyer of U.S. Treasuries other than any government when the oil's at its highest. Now, literally, Exxon is the balance sheet of the entire oil industry. It's going to work out very, very well for them into the future. And, and you've right. got to let businesses run businesses. Right, right. Ramesh, uh, this stock is held in a lot of mutual fund accounts. How is this going to impact mutual funds today? Uh, very significantly, there's approximately $200 billion of Exxon stock held uh, in out of about three trillion dollars of equity mutual funds so the average u.s mutual fund comprises six percent exxon stock uh... so that's pretty significant why though uh, you know we hear I, i'm sure a lot of people who probably own this mutual fund are probably you know they're, they're into the green environment movement they probably don't even know they own this why are fund managers still so concentrated on this despite possible public backlash? Well, Exxon comprises 5% of the S&P, 7% of the Dow, so all the index funds own about 5% uh, S&P. Uh, Exxon is overweight in the large cap core, large cap growth value, and equity income segments. Uh, so even if they weren't overweight, funds would own them to the tune of about 5%. Right. No matter and what. Exactly right. Okay. Don, uh, ExxonMobil getting out of the retail and convenience gas business, what kind of impact is that going to have? Well, I mean, that's been, that's been a trend that's been going on for several years now. There are, uh, big oil companies actually, despite all the uh, signs you see of every gas station that has a big oil company name, they only own about 2%, less than 2%. Those of are franchised the, of the, Most of them are franchise licensed uh, stores that sell their gas. But they are mostly owned by entrepreneurs. 62% uh, of the, uh, store, the convenience store gas stations you see in the United States are owned by single store owners, people who just own one, uh, one store. You know, on that note, the guy near, nearest to my house who sells us gas, he was complaining tremendously last mm -hmm. year when oil was at $147. He said he was on, almost on the verge of going out of business, Absolutely. and yet it's come down and he's still sort of complaining. Well, Where's the sweet spot for convenience stores mm -hmm. on this? Well, you know, well, what happened? Well, at $4 a gallon, he was right. It was, it was very, very difficult to make a profit on, on, on oil. But even now that it's gone down, consumers are not spending. And consumers are not coming back to the stores. Uh, Americans are driving less. Once the, uh, 
gasoline hit four dollars a gallon. People have changed their driving habits. They're carpooling more. They're combining trips, and therefore, therefore, they're getting fewer trips to the convenience store. And really, what the convenience store needs is the consumers to go into the store from the pump and buy the hot dog, the candy bar, the coffee, the salty snack, and, and those types of products. So here's the situation: uh, the price is down. They have a little extra money. Do you think this is helping, or is it the overall economy so much that they're still going to stay in the car anyway? The overall economy is so bad right now. It, it, it's a bigger negative. Than the relief of the lower uh, gas prices at this at this point. Joe, I want to send it back out to you. What impact do you think the earnings are going to have on today's session? We started out today slightly higher, but as these big earnings have come out from these large companies, the futures have come down. Do you think this can turn that trend back around? It's certainly going to help. You know, the big news is waiting for the GDP number just to make sure that it's not too big of a surprise. It, it'll le it'll lead the way and help have the trend. And it was good to hear Honeywell and Procter and Gamble as well. So. Uh, I, I think we've got a good chance. They're just waiting on that number. Um, Ramesh, you've got about a minute left. What's going to happen with the mutual fund industry overall? You've got these ETFs, which are cheaper. You've got mutual funds, which have always underperformed, and even more so, it seems, more recently. What's the future looking like? Uh, the future is going to look quite different. I think there will be an increased focus on principal protected index linked mutual funds. Uh, for example, the S&P 500 Capital Appreciation Fund. Uh, it's relatively unknown, but certainly something that one ought to look at. The ticker symbol is SSPAX. Uh, it's index based, so it doesn't overweight any segment. It offers principal protection and a floor at the end of 10 years. So it's a great way to invest in the stock market with protection. Appreciate it. Ramesh, Don, appreciate it. Big Joe, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to send it back over to Alexis and Davos.